Hi guys, Mac here again. Today I thought we'd do a product review because I haven't done one of those in ages. So I've been sent a Crucial X8 external SSD drive. Now apparently this will do up to one gigabyte per second read and write speed. There we go. Now I have several SSDs so I thought it'd be worth comparing them. So for example, I have these. These are the Samsung X5 units. They're incredibly fast, but also very, very expensive. I also have a few of the SanDisk 960 Extremes, so we can compare it to that. And I also have several of these, the Samsung T5. I've used loads of these over the years, and they've proven to be great little devices. Let's go look at the performance of them, and then we can look at the cost as well and see how they compare. To kick off then, let's have a look at some benchmarks. Now this is my iMac Pro and all the drives are plugged into this. So you will see up here, we've got the Crucial X8, which is a USB drive. We have the SanDisk 960, which is also a USB drive. We've got the older Samsung T5, again a USB, but we also have the Samsung X5, which is the really fast Thunderbolt 3 drive. So let's look at the comparative benchmarks of all of these. Now just for a reference point, let's start with the internal iMac drive. Now the internal drive on the iMac Pro is quite impressive. Now I am actually recording the screen and it does seem to impact the performance, but typically I'll average about three gigabytes per second write speed with about 2.5 to 2.7 gigabytes per second read speed. It's, it's properly impressive. So let's move on. We'll start with the Crucial X8. Now this drive averages around 930 megabytes per second write speed and around the 950 to 970 megabytes per second in terms of read, which is pretty impressive for a USB drive. Let's compare it to the SanDisk 960. So on the SanDisk I'm getting around the 730 megabytes per second write speed on average and around the 860 to 870 megabytes per second on the read. So it's still a fast drive, but not quite as fast as the X8. Now let's compare it to the X5. Now bear in mind the X5 is a Thunderbolt 3 drive. It isn't USB. There you go. It is thunderously quick. Now the X5s, the reason I use them is because of their sheer performance. I mean, that averages around the two gigabytes per second write speed or just under and around the two and a half gigabytes per second read speed. It is a very capable drive. It is, of course, Thunderbolt, though. So you do need a machine that's equipped with Thunderbolt. Now, just to throw an older drive in there, let's have a look at the Samsung T5. I have quite a few of these units because they're cheap and I tend to use them when I'm traveling. The write speed tends to average around the 400, 420 megabytes per second and the read a little bit more than that. It's not blindingly fast by today's standards, but if you remember back to kind of the older spinning drives where you'd be lucky to hit 50 or 60 megabytes per second for two and a half inch drives, they were very, very impressive. Now benchmarks are all very well, but let's have a look at some real world type performance. So for example, I spend a lot of my time moving around virtual machines. So I have a virtual machine here. So let's have a look at the copy time across these SSDs. So this is 44.5 gigabytes in size. So let's start with the X8. Now that managed to copy at almost exactly one gigabyte per second, which was a bit of a surprise. Normally the quoted speeds are not quite what you get, but that's almost bang on. Let's also have a look at the comparative times on the X5 Thunderbolt 3 and the 960 Pro. So as you'd expect, the X5 is blindingly quick, does it in around 20 seconds or two gigabytes per second. The SanDisk took a lot longer at about 88 seconds, which is around half a gigabyte per second. So it's roughly half the speed of the X8. Single big chunks of files are one thing. What about if you work with lots of small files? So let's have a look at the comparison for that. So if we open up our X8, you'll see on here I've got a folder called Photos Export. Now in that is the export of my 2019 photos library. So there are, what, 5,973 items and 107 gigabytes of data. That will be lots of small photos and things like that. So let's see what the copy time is like for that. All I'm going to do is just copy it to the desktop here. So 
So again, the unit comes out at around a gigabyte per second. So the performance is really consistent, even with thousands of small files. Now I think that's really impressive. Just for comparison purposes, let's just try exactly the same copy, this time from the X5. It's exactly the same folder, the exactly the same number of files. So the Samsung X5 did the whole thing in 47 seconds, which is about 2.3 gigabytes per second. That's mighty impressive, and that's the reason why I tend to use these drives for my main operating units. Let's have a look at the summary of these devices. So at the top, I've got a list of every device that we've tested. You can see the size, the typical buy price, the cost per gigabyte, read and write speed. The ranking is based on the read speed. The costs at the top are all in sterling. I've converted it down the bottom here for US dollars. Although to be fair on the typical buy prices, I haven't looked at the US pricing. I've just directly converted it. Now, one thing I'd like to point out is there is a new version of the Samsung Extreme Pro. Now, not only is it a lot cheaper, so this unit, the one we've been testing, is about £400. The new version is about £220, and it's a lot quicker. That's the unit there. Apparently, that has a similar sort of read speeds to the Crucial X8. If I get the opportunity, I'll try and pick one of these up and I'll update the description with the findings on the performance. But in general, as you can see, the performance of the Crucial X8 is actually really impressive, certainly for the amount that it costs. I mean, it's £145. Compare that to the Samsung X5, for example, which is a Thunderbolt drive. The X5 is obviously a lot quicker, but it's also more than double the price. So you have to choose what's valid for you. I have a couple of the X5s that I use for my operational stuff. There's one on my iMac Pro, for example, and one that I carry with me. However, going forwards, I suspect I'm going to switch to these X8s because they look really good value for money. One final thing to cover then, because I know I'll get asked about it, because I get asked about it all the time, is can I run virtual machines from this external drive? Well, the answer is absolutely yes. So let's have a look at that. So here's Parallels Desktop. Let's open up a virtual machine that I have on the Crucial X8. There you go. That's the one that we copied earlier. Let's fire it up and we'll see what the performance is like. There we go. Let's get logged in. There we go. Now, if we have a look at the spec that I've allocated to this machine, I can't remember. Let's have a look. It is, it's got four virtual processors enabled and 16 gig of RAM and it is running on the external SSD. So let's fire up so you can have a look at the performance. There's Visio, PowerPoint, Word, Excel, and I'm assuming this machine's got Chrome in it. Let's have a look. Yeah, there we go. So I think you can see that the performance is very fluid and it's completely usable. Now that is running on the external drive natively. Even things like snapshots are still quite quick. So let's go and take a snapshot. There we go, it's done. Now it's also pretty quick to restore as well. So let's do that. Revert to snapshot. And it's done. So yeah, the answer is you absolutely can use virtual machines on the external drives. In fact, I use it on the X5s all the time. Anyway, let's get this machine shut down. So I hope you found that useful. It is kind of crazy, the performance and the bang per buck that you get with storage. I mean, it wasn't that long ago where small form factor storage, you'd measure in tens of megabytes per second, not gigabytes, kind of crazy. And it does make a lot of difference to your workflow if you have the requirement to move or work with large sets of data. I certainly do, and it saves me a ton of time. And not only does it save me a ton of time, it enables me to do things that perhaps I wouldn't attempt if I didn't have that kind of performance storage with me. Anyway, that's enough for me today. If you like this video, I'd appreciate the thumbs up. Well, if you didn't, I'd have doubt you'd have got this far anyway. But until next time.